Hey y'all, Ramdino here, coming at you again for another Appalachian Trail community news and through hiker update. Well, we have got a lot of stuff going on the trail out there. The bubble is well into the New, New England states out there, and so a lot of folks reporting in. Greatly appreciate everybody that's reported in. If you're a through hiker out there on the trail and you want to be included in the updates, just send me through the links down in the description section, either DM or you can send me through email. Send me your updates for the trail that week on a Friday or Saturday. Let me know how things are going, where you're at, and any other news you got that might help other hikers out there. Because that's what we're here for, to help the through hikers and just to help the hiker community in general. And if you've come here to check out what's going on with the hiker community, you've come to the right place. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Share it with other like-minded folks so that you can help me and other folks out there build the hiker community. Let's go ahead and find out what's going on out there with the through hikers So Seb and Quicksilver, they have finished the Virginia Triple Crown. So congratulations to them. They say it's dry, dry, dry out here, so long water carries are the rule there in mid to southern Virginia. They claim it's great to be back on the trail, and they're now under 700 miles to go, so they had already summited. They're doing their flip-flop, and they are heading on down to Georgia. Fungo is currently, and I'm going to butcher this, so you Yankees up there, you can correct me, currently in Carabasset, Maine, at milepost 2004.9. So he anticipates summoning Katahdin before the end of the month. So he also says it's been a great adventure. So that is awesome. Goo passed the 1500 mile mark and has entered Massachusetts and also says the mosquitoes have been really bad ever since New Jersey. Huckwasir is north of Dalton and be crossing in over into Vermont shortly. He had a little bout with a stomach bug, not the norovirus, but the one thing that he did wrong is he didn't pay attention to his body and he readily admitted this and so that other folks, and he wanted to let other folks know out there to pay attention to your body. And that is that, you know, you start getting dehydrated when you get sick, stomach bugs, things come out from both ends a lot of times, orifices that they shouldn't be coming out of and you need to stay hydrated. You need to keep your electrolytes balanced. He didn't do that and he actually had to have a little bit of help getting off the trail and getting into Barrington and then he got into Barrington. He had to take several days off in order just to rest and recuperate. So appreciate you sharing that with us, Huck. He's back on the trail now. As always, Huck has this just this incredible, he's he just always in such a good mood, always enjoying what's going on out there in the trail. And he says he is happier than ever with a refreshed sense of joy. So I think that's the word I was looking for, joy. He's always got joy in it. So anyway, listen to what Huck says and keep yourself, you know, if you need to get off the trail to recuperate, do that. Keep yourself hydrated. Keep those electrolytes up. Boo Boo, who is a new addition to our update, Tramley, uh, he is also a podcast listener, and he started in June on a Pure Nobo. So June is awful late to be on a Pure Nobo. But he's young. He had to wait till June because he just graduated high school. And he also had to wait because that was when his Eagle Scout award ceremony was scheduled. So congratulations on both accounts, both huge milestones in your life, and both will pay accolades off for you in the future. Uh, his dad is actually the one that's doing a lot of updating. He doesn't really have a social media channel other than a means to track him. So he is... Uh, putting out different pictures and different comments through a Google Maps link. And I'll leave that down in the description section. And basically it's www.wheresmax.org. And you can go there, click on that and see his comments and what he's seen throughout the trail. His dad's making a lot of those comments. And a lot of that is good information, particularly for people wanting to section hike or even through hikers that are coming up. Good stuff to look at there. Boo Boo says that the water caches and a lot of them have been empty or, empty or nearly at every road crossing in Pennsylvania. So thanks Trail Angels for going out there and doing that, getting those that water caches out there for you. And he says that has made life so much easier. Uh, it also says the Ridge Runners did a great job, job marking the Hornet areas through there. And the north side of Palmerton is all mowed. So thanks to the trail maintainers for doing that. And it makes for a great hike by the Superfund site. He also says that where he doesn't have a water cache, it's not hard to find water. It's about a half, it can be as much as a half a mile off the trail, but of course, to me, that's kind of hard to find water because you've got a half mile there and a half mile back for a mile round trip. But somebody as young as Boo Boo, 
no problem. So, any case, thanks a lot for that information, Boo Boo. Diana Wolf from the Happy Married Couple is 200 miles from Patodden on her flip flop, and she started north from Delaware, Virginia at mile 730, one third of the way up a trail. So, they are heading back down to Georgia whenever she summits, and they'll still walk Nobo until the end of October. Yak is currently in Massachusetts. He's going to be entering Vermud any day. It says the mosquitoes, again, mosquitoes have been bad in Massachusetts, but Connecticut was amazing. He is looking forward to Vermont. Okay, if you're looking forward to Vermont, probably don't need to go look at my videos on Vermont. Drifter and the Hun, they are in the middle of Maine and expected to finish their trip by next Friday. So that is awesome. They finally got a break in the rain. They said they had 23 days of rain in July. And she had indicated to me that they had a record rainfall in New England as of July 16th. And six, since July 16th, they've only had three days without rain. So today marks the fifth day in a row that they did not actually have rain and they could put on dry socks and shoes. I can tell you, oh, what a plus that is to the way you feel, your hike, just your attitude in general to be able to walk, dry shoes, dry socks, not having to worry about blisters. Bandit, he gave us his update from the summit of Bromley where he was sleeping in his hammock under the ski lift, and that's Bromley, Vermont. He said the mud hasn't been bad the last few days due to some dry weather. Tex is in Maine, and she did all of the presidentials in one day and indicated that that left her really exhausted, I can't imagine, but it was worth it because she did the ridges and Mount Washington on an unusually clear and gorgeous day. So that is awesome, Tex. Glad to hear. Not a lot of folks have been able to get good clear days, I have noticed, uh, particularly on Mount Washington. Roadrunner has gotten to the 2,100-mile mark. Papa Groot, he made it to the summit of Mount Washington on July 31st, and he count crossed Mount Musilaki, Probably butchered that one too. Leaving the White Mountains behind. He's hit the 1500 mile mark and he's had a lot of fun over the last couple of weeks crossing paths with the folks that he hiked with down south before he did his flip flop. So he flipped up north. Now he's on his Sobo uh, portion of his hike. Lunar and the Wonder Wolf Pack, they are in Vermont and probably almost in New Hampshire. Sugar has passed the 2000 mark. Hillbilly, AKA Life Alert, has crossed into New Hampshire. Luscious, Nate, and Tupac are north of Palmerton, Pennsylvania. They had to get Nate's dog, Moria, off of the trail. Moria apparently injured a paw and was limping. I will say this about dogs, that dogs typically by the time, unless they immediately hurt themselves right then, typically by the time you see them limping, they have been in pain for a while. Dogs will not, uh, they, will, they try to compensate for their pain. That's built into their DNA when they came from wolves. You know, wolves are the, the weak link in the pack gets culled out of the pack to go and die and fend for itself. And so dogs are the same way. They don't want to show weakness. But at some point in time, they decompensate and they don't have a choice and they have to show that weakness. So they did get Moyer off the trail, so I'm glad that they got that and took care of her. Pino has crossed the main border, and Two Knees will be at Upper Goose Cabin today and says it all is going well. A few folks that had gotten off the trail, Survivor, got off the trail in Grafton Turnpike at New Hampshire Mile 1768 due to fatigue and weight loss. He started at Harper's Square, West Virginia, and did 743 miles, or just over a third of the trail, which he says is not bad for a 64-year-old cancer survivor. Well, I'm going to tell you, Survivor, that ain't bad for anybody. Somebody right out of high school or a 64-year-old cancer survivor, that's not bad for anybody. So congratulations. Proud of you for getting out there and do that. The main thing is you got out there and did that, and congratulations on your hike. And congratulations on surviving cancer. He also has a cancer awareness and support group that he is raising money for, and you can find that link on his YouTube channel at Survivor High on the Trail if anyone wants to go and make a contribution to that. So I would recommend that you go over and check him out there, Survivor High on the Trail, uh, YouTube channel. You can look that up and find him there. Shoes on the Trail, he got off in Stratton, Maine to take care of some unexpected business at home. Just decided that he was going to turn his through hike into a section hike. So Shoes is actually shoeless. So he has been hiking almost all of the trail 
barefoot. So he has completed 975 miles, 787 were no bow, and then 188 were sobo. So he finished 975, 931 of which were done completely barefoot. The other 44 uh, he did with some very lightweight sandals that he had on. And he did that because he had some uh, some injuries that were healing, but he wanted to keep making the miles. So uh, good to hear that you are getting those injuries taken care of, Shoes. Buttercup took a fall coming off Ball Plate Mountain and got a concussion and hurt leg and says that she is off the trail for a week for R&R. &R. Uh, she had to do a, a concussion protocol, and believe me, uh, I had to do a con concussion protocol on come along here on our Vermont Vermud trip, and you'll get to see that in an upcoming video. Uh, and one thing about the percussion protocol is know the question, the answers to the questions that you're going to ask them. You know, so typically you want to ask them uh, their name, where they're from, where they're at, what day it is. Well, when I asked come along what day it was. I couldn't recall what day it was either. Neither he couldn't nor I could. So that was not a very good test for concussion protocol there. So when you're, as you well know, when you're out there hiking and you're doing multi days, uh, the days just all run together. Even the hours just all run together. And then Run Ray says she is on the injured roster list. She slipped at the Mahusic Notch and sprained her right shoulder. Had to be escorted out by game wardens and they took her to the Rumford Hospital there. I think I saw where she had actually gotten back on. I know that she's going to take some time off and then possibly flip back up to be with her family. So, Runway, if you got back on, let me know that. Otherwise, right now, she's on the injured roster list. Don't have any summits to report you with you. There have been people that are summiting, but nobody that has reported in directly to me, and it helps me out tremendously. Just like if you give me your updates, so I don't have, if you push those to me, so I don't have to go find them. Likewise with your summits, because I just don't have the time to go and look up everybody's channel and follow along all the 420 some plus or minus folks that have signed up on my list or the folks that are out there. So uh, if you could send me your summit pictures, also send me your summit number so that we can kind of keep track of that and I can share that with folks. So the bears have been, uh, well, they just, the bears have been raging this year. No doubt about it, and the ATC president has decided in her ultimate wisdom that, hey, President of the United States can put executive orders out. She's going to put an executive order out. So she has put an executive order out to post new signage on the Appalachian Trail for bears. And so basically the signage reads that, hey, uh, to protect yourself, you need to carry a bear, uh, wear bear bells so they can hear you coming, take bear prepper, bear pepper pepper spray so that uh, you can defend yourself. Also understand what the different bear feces are like. So black bear feces, they say, or she says, is got, uh, you know, squirrel fur in it and fruits and nuts. And grizzly bear feces has, uh, smells like pepper spray and has little bells in it. So uh, she seems to feel like that you need to know grizzly bear feces because she thinks they're coming this way. So in any case, uh, they have also, ACT has put out a different way you should be dealing with the grizzly bears when they get here. Uh, let's go ahead and show that video of how they think you should be doing that. At the river mouth, the bears catch only the tastiest, most tender salmon. Which is exactly what we at John West want. John West endured the worst to bring you the best. Okay, so I'm not sure I'm going to be doing that if I see a grizzly bear or a black bear or any kind of bear. Uh, but that's up to you if you want to do that. I do not recommend that and recommend going back to the old way of doing it. Uh, uh, and that is uh, various means that you can find uh, uh, on the internet of dealing with bears on the Appalachian Trail. So some trail angels that I wanted to mention, uh, Spineless Cougar and Malcolm, uh, did two days of trail magic this past week in Vermont. They served over 40 hikers up there, somewhere around 43, and they said 90% of those are AT3 
through hikers up there as opposed to long trail hikers. So long trail is on the same treadway as the AT going through Vermont. And so you would expect there to be some long trail folks coming up for trail magic, but they said 90% of them are AT uh, through hikers. So that kind of tells me that's, you know, the bubble is there between Massachusetts and New Hampshire, AKA Ver Vermont or Vermont. They also stopped at the Yellow Deli when they got done, and they said there's somewhere around 60 to 80 bodies staying at the Yellow Deli. They're, they're hostile there. So that's a lot of folks in one hostel. I didn't know that they were that big to handle that. Uh, but in any case, I'm sure they're being well taken care of there. That kind of gives you an indication of, of where the bubble is up there. So just a little bit of trail news out there for you. While I was looking at Boo Boo's map of where he's been and, and – where you can track him on uh, online. I also came across a list that Alda has put out, and I think it's been several years ago, for all the P.O. boxes up and down the trail. So that they got towns and hostels there that you can click on it, and it gives you a telephone number to call and a mailing address for that either hostel or P.O. box. And it's specifically done so a place you can uh, send resupply to or send packages on up the trail. So there's a lot of hostels that aren't on there. Uh, so it probably was done some time ago and needs to be updated. Uh, but for instance, when I clicked on Greasy Creek Friendly, here's what I found. So I got their number and I also got their address of where you can send your package to. And then the bridge is out in the Harriman State, right when you come into the Harriman State Park up in New York. So the Harriman State Park reported the bridge on Arden Valley Road immediately north of New York 17, which is Nobo Mile 1386.7, is currently closed, and the ATC says, to all vehicle and foot traffic, including Appalachian Trail through hikers, until further notice due to emergency repair, repairs. And the ATC also says they're planning for an AT reroute is currently in progress. So that's been a few days ago. Uh, I don't like waiting around for the ATC to make a move on stuff. Hikers are out there. They need to know what's going on. And so I'm going to get to you as fast as I can. And so that's what I did. So I contacted the, uh, the tuxedo, the town of tuxedo police department, also uh, talk, contacted the Harriman State Park uh, Rangers there, and I also contacted the Orange County Historical Society, which has a park right there, uh, right there at Harriman State Park. And actually, I think it's part of Harriman State Park. So, wanted to find a new reroute, reroute for you since the ATC is not coming up with anything, and nothing else has been published. So, after contacted them. Uh, I got a response from the uh, Orange County Historical Society. They mentioned that the Nurin Trail Bridge may be an option. Uh, however, and then also so did the Tuxedo Police Department. However, they did send me, uh, the, the Historical Society did send me a picture of what the bridge looks like. And they said you could keep your feet on the sides walking across it. I don't think that's a good option for you. So I came up with a better option for you than risking life and limb. There's not an option to go underneath the bridge because you've got that four-lane highway that's there, maybe more lanes than that, but a lot of traffic running through there. There's a ravine on one side and a rock cliff on the other side, undercut that you'll have to scale to get up, so that is not an option just going under the bridge. So the legal way that I came up with was to, at the closure head there, uh, right, the, right before you get to the bridge, uh, right as you actually come out of the woods, you're on uh, Highway 17, so it's just a two-lane road. If you'll turn left and walk north on Arden Road until it gets up there and it's uh, like a mile or so, turns right and cross over the highway there uh, on Arden Road. So just keep following Arden Road. Once you cross over the highway, it's going to fork. So you fork to the right into Clove Furnish Road and then follow that road around. It'll wind on through that park and you'll see a big old huge open area there. So walk through that open area, walk all the way to the back, you'll cross a pond, you'll cross next to some structures around the pond, you'll cross uh, near, it looks like a ranger's house because there's a trampoline around it. Uh, but keep on going and then if you just keep heading south, almost due south, and if you've got gut hooks, gut hooks will follow you and take you there, then you will get to Arden Valley Road. Take a right on Arden Valley Road or head trail north and 
that will take you back up to Elk Pen Lot, which is where the trailhead is for the AT and where you would have come out had you crossed over the bridge had it been open. And then you can get back on the AT there. Or, as I talked to the Tuxedo Town Police, they said that hikers could just cross the bridge safely. So there are some barricades up there. They indicated there's no fence. There is uh, nobody there watching you, nobody to give you a ticket. They said the bridge was closed due to, to vehi vehicular traffic because it had some issues with stability. So probably what occurred there is bridges yearly have to be uh, looked at by an engineer to just um, say that they're okay, that they don't need any major repairs or anything. And of course, with some infrastructure that has been failing in the U.S. Uh, lately, uh, that they have, uh, you know, they probably erred on the side of caution. You know, with the condo collapse down in Florida, they're going to be taking the, you know, not the easy way, but I guess the cover your CYA uh, way out. And so anything that looks even vaguely suspicious, they're going to close it to everybody. The uh, policeman there said that they had just had buses going across it that week. So, it, you know, it was probably fine and it would be okay for the hikers to go across uh, just as long as they did so safely. So while it may be closed, can't guarantee you that nobody's going to give you a ticket there. Uh, the safe bet is to go north like I just indicated. However, pretty sure you can just book it across that bridge and you'll be okay. So a few things coming up for me in the future. Come along and I, we will be getting back on the trail at the end of August. We'll be heading north back where we left off there at the base of Chestnut Ridge Knob. Looking forward to heading on north, doing about 40 to 50 miles on the trail for a long weekend. And just looking forward to get back out there. Uh, hopefully we'll have better weather than we had in Vermont, but we don't have to put up with the mud like we did there. So looking forward to getting back out there. Always miss the trail. Even, you know, for Ver mud where it was not the best conditions and I probably griped and complained and whined and moaned and you're probably going to hear some of that in some of my videos. Uh, I look back on it now and say, wow, we still had a great time. We were on the trail. It's better than being at work, right? So in any case, we're getting back on the trail. So uh, until then, check out my Ver mud adventures that I'll be posting here in the next few weeks and then you can watch my uh, continued Nobo uh, hike on the Appalachian Trail uh, section hikes with Come Along and I. Uh, also, don't forget to podcast. If you're out there through hiking, I do have a podcast that you can listen to my updates. And I'm actually going to start putting my uh, trail hikes on there as well. I had a subscriber there indicate that, uh, that they felt like it would be a good idea. They didn't necessarily need the video version they could pick up enough from my uh, descriptions in my uh, trail section hikes to where the audio version would be fine. So I'm going to start putting those up there as well. So, you know, the whole reason I started the podcast, it was, it doesn't make any money. It's not monetized, but I did it because some people said, hey, it'd be easier for us to listen to a podcast. So that's what I'm doing, folks. That's all I got this week. As always, appreciate you, and we'll see you out there.